Hello, everybody. Welcome to the eighth video of the Distance Learning Program. I'm glad you're here today, and I hope that you and your families are doing well and that you're happy and healthy. Uh, today, we're going to start in the Ventures 3 book. We're going to start on page 39, and we're going to have a lesson on two-word verbs. Two-word verbs. We're going to also use the Neighborhood Watch success story to find the two-word verbs that are going to be in this exercise, exercise three, on page 39. So if you could turn to page 39, exercise three, it starts with after you read, and we're on part B, build your vocabulary. I'd like to take a look at this entry here in the vocabulary uh, section. Uh, this is a dictionary entry, and it says, read the dictionary entry for the word get. Find the definition of get together. So, if you opened your dictionary and you looked up the word get, you would find the very first entry after the word is the pronunciation, and it shows you how to say the word get. Then the T means transitive. That means get is a transitive verb. And uh, that means that it's able to take an object. If an intransitive verb is shown, it'll say I. And uh, that means that it can't take an object. So the next entry is getting. Getting is the continuous form of the verb get. And notice that you double the T and add ing. Usually for one syllable verbs, you double the final consonant. If it's a consonant and then a vowel and then another consonant, then you double the final consonant and add ing. Like the word beg, uh, if you want to use beg in the continuous form, you would add another g and it would become begging. You add another G and then the I-N-G, and the continuous form of beg is begging. Or put, you add another T and then the I-N-G, and the continuous form of put is putting. Next, we have the past form of get, and that's got, G-O-T. Then, it shows past part, and that means participle, and the past participle for the verb get is gotten, G-O-T-T-E-N. And then it tells the definition of the verb get. It means to take something into your possession. That means you obtain it. If you take it into your possession, that means you obtain it. So you can see that this is the standard entries for the verb get, and uh, for any uh, word that you find in the dictionary, it usually shows the pronunciation, then the part of speech, and if it's a verb, it shows the past and the past participle, and then the definition. Now, these, the next thing that you see here uh, is the words get together, and that's also a verb, and then the second word is an adverb. Together is an adverb. So it shows that it's intransitive. And it says to meet or to have a meeting or party. To meet or to have a meeting or party. So you can see that this is a totally different definition than the word get. Get means to take something into your possession. But get together means to have a meeting or a party. It means to meet. So when get is by itself, it has a totally different definition than what it means when it's with together, get together. So frequently that's the way it works with many verbs. A verb by itself has a different definition than a word in a verb in combination with another word, which would make a two-word verb, okay? So now we want to look at part two, 
And it says, get together is a two-word verb. Look at the article in exercise two. Match the two-word verbs. So what we're going to do is to try to match up the verbs that are on the top line with the prepositions on the bottom line. And those will form two-word verbs. Get is already matched up with together. So now we have to look and see if we can find what matches with look, look. So if you go back to the Neighborhood Watch success story, let's try to find out where the verb look is. Now, if you look at the middle of the first paragraph, it says, for example, we look after our neighbor's houses when they aren't home. So look and after are together. That forms a two-word verb. So let's look back here at exercise two, and you can see that look will match with after. So look after is the two-word verb that we found in the story. So now, what do you think look after means? Try to think about that. It means that they're going to take care of the other person's home. They're going to take care of the person's home when they're gone. It says when they aren't home. So when the neighbor is gone, they look after the neighbor's house or they take care of it. Now, look at the next word. It says break. So again, we need to look in the story and see if we can find the verb break. And if you look down near the bottom of the first column, it talks about how they noticed the two men who were next to George Garcia's car. It says, George lives on Rolling Hills Drive. The men were trying to break into the car. So break goes with into. So if you look back on page 39, all you have to do is match break with into. Now, if they were trying to break into the car, what do you think that means? That means that they were trying to enter the car illegally. So that gives you a good idea of what the meaning is by just understanding what's happening in the story. What about the next verb? It says run. Let's look into the story here and find out where we can use the word run. Ah, very, very good. Very good. Right next to break into the car, it says suddenly the car alarm went off. The men ran away and got into a car down the street. Okay, so ran away, ran away. That means that they tried to escape. So run away means escape or flee. Flee means to run quickly and try to escape from something. And it's spelled F-L-E-E. -E. So run goes with away. And finally, get. What, what preposition goes with get? Well, it says the men ran away and got into a car down the street. Got into. So get goes with into. In this form, it's past tense. It says the men ran away. That's past tense. And got into a car. So that's past tense as well. So the preposition that goes with get is into. So to quickly summarize, look goes with after, break matches with into, break into, run goes with away, run away, and get goes with into, get into. So next in part three, it says write each verb in section or exercise B2 next to its definition. So it says, to meet is get together. And we got that from the definition right here. Get together is 
to meet. Next, it says to enter a car illegally. I'm sorry, legally. To enter a car legally. So, um, legally means that you're not breaking the law when you do it. It's lawful. Uh, what would be a good definition for that? Well, when we said the two men were entering the car, wait a minute, hold on one second. It says enter a car legally. Well, the two men were getting into the car down the street. So they were getting into the car legally. That was their car. So get into would be the two word verb that would match with number two. What would be number three? To enter a car illegally. Illegally means it's against the law. And notice the way to show that something is illegal is just to add I-L to the beginning of legal. So legal means it's lawful or you're not breaking the law. But when you put I-L in front of legal, it means it's not legal. So it's against the law. What would be the two word verb that we just used in the article that means to enter a car illegally? Well, that's break into. Break into means you're entering a car illegally. Next, number four, it says to escape, to leave a place very fast. When we read the story, it talked about how the two men ran away. So the two word verb that means to escape or to leave a place very fast is ran away. And the present form would be run away. Next, it says to take care of. What would be the two word verb that means to take care of? Well, remember, neighbors sometimes take care of their neighbor's houses when they're not home. So that means to look after. To take care of is look after. So the two word verb that goes in blank number five is look after. Now we're going to use these two word verbs to complete the sentences in part four. So please look at part four where it says complete the sentences with the verbs in exercise B3. Number 4A says let's blank for coffee tomorrow, okay? And the book has the words get together. So the two word verb that answers that question is get together. Next B, it says somebody tried to blank my neighbor's house. Well, that probably means they were trying to enter the house illegally and that would be break into. So the answer for part B is break into. Part C says, I saw the girl next door blank a car and drive away. What does it mean to enter a car? That would be get into, get into. Then part D, my cats always blank when the door is open. Well, what do cats usually do when you open the door? Usually they run. So the answer for that would be run away. My cats always run away when the door is open. And part E says, all the people on my street blank each other's houses. All the people on my street blank each other's houses. From the story, it talked about how neighbors will sometimes look after each other's houses when the neighbors are away. So the answer for that question would be look after. So to quickly summarize, B is break into, C is get into, D is run away, and E is look after, look after. Then part C, it says talk with a partner, ask and answer the questions. Do you enjoy getting together with friends? The answer is probably yes. Most people do enjoy getting together with friends. But right now, 
It's been uh, pretty difficult to do that because of the social distancing and um, the stay-at-home orders that have been in place over the past two months. So a lot of people are uh, very anxious and they are getting a little stir-crazy. They want to get out of their houses. Uh, hopefully, this virus will uh, be contained sometime in the near future and this health crisis will end and people will be able to get together with their friends again. But right now, it might be a difficult time to get together with your friends. It says, um, do you and your neighbors look after each other? How? You might try to think of some examples of how you and your neighbors look after each other or take care of each other. If your neighbors are sick, sometimes you might ask them if there's something that you can do to help. Maybe you can help them by giving them some food or doing some chores around their houses. The next lesson is on page 40. And we're going to look at lesson E, the writing lesson. So if you'll turn to page 40, let's begin by looking at part A. It says, talk with a partner, answer the questions. Have you ever complained to your landlord or apartment manager? What does the word complain mean? Usually, complain means that you are upset about something and you're not happy. And when you tell someone that you're not happy about something that they did or something that's happening to you, then that's called complaining. So the verb is complain and the noun is a complaint. And it's, it's with a T on the end. So remember that complain is the verb and complaint with the T on the end is a noun. So you can make a complaint when you write a letter, uh, say to the landlord, if you live in an apartment, uh, you can write a letter to the landlord or the management and tell them that you're unhappy about something that's happening in your apartment. And that's called a complaint letter. And we're gonna talk about a complaint letter in this section because uh, we're going to read a complaint letter example. It says, have you ever complained to your landlord or apartment manager? If you ever lived in an apartment and you had some problem, uh, maybe there was a problem with your dishwasher or you had a problem with the air conditioner, uh, you might write a letter to the a manager or to the apartment uh, landlord and uh, complain, and that's called a complaint letter. So the next question says, what was the problem? Well, the problem would be whatever the reason was why you wrote the letter. What was the problem that you were having? How did you complain? In person, by telephone, or in writing? There are four, several ways that you can complain. You can walk over to the office and talk to the manager in person. You could call the office and talk to the manager by phone, or you could send an email, and that would be in writing. Number four says, what happened? That means, did the manager do anything to resolve the problem? Did he help in any way? Or it's possible that the manager did nothing. Now we're going to read an uh, a complaint email in part B. So please read along with me. It says, from Luis Ramos to Acme Properties. Subject, neighbors. And then we have the address, Acme Properties, 125th Avenue, New York, New York. And the zip code is 10011 to whom it may concern. And if you look at this brown box over here, you see the culture note. It says, when you don't know the name of the person you are writing to, 
used to whom it may concern. My name is Luis Ramos. I live at 156 South Flower Street, Apartment 3. I am writing because my neighbors in Apartment 9 are too busy. I ask them to be quiet, but they still have loud parties almost every night. Because of the noise, my children can't sleep. And remember, that's a because of uh, phrase. You've got because of and a noun, which is noise. We studied that in the grammar section, just the last video. It says, can you please tell them to be quiet? I hope you will take care of this as soon as possible. Thank you in advance. Sincerely, Luis Ramos. Now, if you have time, please look at questions one through six after the complaint letter and see if you can answer those questions. That should conclude it for today. So I hope that you've enjoyed the video and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Have a great day.